10 interviews in the oil and gas industry presented to you by Epius and Energy Asia. You know, this is not the first time that uh, we are presenting results of research which was performed by the Economist Intelligence Unit. Uh, it's not the third time, as, as Tom already said. We are uh, pretty happy that we share some intelligence uh, with you because it's very important in these circumstances that we learn more about the future and that we are not going into a dark area but having a clear picture what might happen in the future. So uh, before I come to some of uh, the aspects, maybe I demonstrate a little bit what, what we are doing. Um, so we are organized globally in, um, in five business units. One of them we will sell pretty soon, which is uh, the financial services, where we agreed recently that we will sell that to Deutsche Bank, uh, uh, one of the leading uh, banks around the world. So we have then remaining four divisions. We are the incumbent for the uh, uh, postal operation in Germany, that is our heritage. We are the leading company around the world in that because we have a very huge footprint as well outside of Germany in our global mail business. Uh, we are pretty proud about uh, our operations there. You know, we are probably the most sophisticated mail operator around the world of that scale. Uh, very profitable business and in very good shape. Then we have another brand of DHL three divisions. One is the express business, which is uh, very fast shipments, uh, uh, parcels, and uh, letters around the world. We are a leader uh, for that business around the world, except the US market. Then we have a supply chain business, which is all the contract logistics and warehousing activities. We are here also global market leader, uh, three times bigger than uh, the next company. Uh, the third division is global forwarding, where we are uh, by, by twice the leader um, uh, of in the air freight business and together with Kuno and Naga, the leader in the ocean freight business. And these are the businesses we operate around the world. So we are in very attractive market with very uh, nice uh, uh, market positions being the leader more or less everywhere. If I talk in particular about Asia, our footprint is quite sizable as well. Globally, we have um, around 500,000 employees so we are the sixth or seven largest employer around the world. 50,000 employees of them work out of Asia already for us. So this is a huge operation. Our revenues are close to 10 billion US dollars. Uh, they will be this year close to 10 billion US dollars. Um, we have invested more than 2 billion US dollars in the last couple of years. And we will invest continuously. And you see some other numbers. You know, We have six hubs here. We have close to a million uh, TEUs this year on ocean freight. Um, uh, we, have, we are operating in every country of Asia. So Asia is in very good shape. Uh, it is very important for us as a key market for future growth. Now coming to um, uh, the impact of the oil price development. That is uh, the forecast of the Economist, Economist Intelligence Unit. You see that, that uh, they expect for, uh, uh, and Justin will talk about that more in, in a minute. But they will see a drop for 2009 and, and then again a rise. Uh, I think that is the trend of rising oil prices will not disappear just because we have a short term drop. It will come back and you will see a significant development there. I think the bubble we have seen this year was a bubble, uh, and you see that now it was not aligned with the demand one-to-one. Uh, -one. So nevertheless, it will have impact. <clears throat> and you will see some of the results uh, in a minute. But beyond the really oil price um, on the GDP, where Justin will talk about, there's also another aspect. You know, oil is one of the reasons why we have a carbon emission problem around the world, the global warming issue, and, and we feel uh, very much um, you know, engaged in that 
uh, thing as well. You know, we are, although we are, you know, our global footprint is roughly 30 million tons a year, which is equal to uh, a, a major coal utility plant. Uh, so it's not as big, although we are the largest logistics company, but it's a sizable footprint. So I think we have an obligation to do something on that. And that's the reason why we launched uh, earlier this year uh, a carbon reduction program where we committed ourselves to reduce the carbon emission for any litter, any parcel, any pallet by 10% until 2012 and 30% until 2020. We have produced in the meantime products. You can buy from us products which are carbon neutral. Uh, that comes from uh, avoidance of carbon emission, but also buying certificates uh, to compensate for carbon emission. You know, there are still no planes available yet without having carbon emission, so you can't avoid it entirely, uh, but you can do quite a lot. And we are doing that. We measure the carbon uh, emission per parcel, per pallet. So if you buy something, you can, can tell you how much carbon emission is driven by that. And we are engaged in many different activities. We just launched in the UK the first carbon neutral warehouse, no carbon emission at all, uh, or even compensated for certain activities, but this facility even have no carbon emission because they, they use different uh, energy supply and, or whatever you can do to really neutralize all the carbon emission or avoid that in the first place. So that is our comprehensive program. The oil and the carbon emission is one aspect which will have significant impact on global trade. The other one is, you know, protectionism. We are pretty happy that the G20 declared very clearly, as stated here, that they have no intention to uh, uh, build new fences around different countries. I think if that is happening from some countries in the future, it will only damage, uh, I think, the, the globe more than needed. You know, everybody has benefited from the global trading, almost everybody. You know, if you remember what has been the case 10 years, 20 years ago in Asia, I think Asia benefited significantly, but also the US and, and Europe benefited very much from global trade. So I think it's good that the, the politicians from the G20 states made a very clear statement that they have no intention to uh, increase protectionism again. And I think that is important and that will help global trade and global health will help the globe to let many people or more people get access to uh, a better life. And I think that's important because we are a facilitator of global trade can uh, make life easier for our customers by, by having smarter ideas, cheaper ideas, more effective uh, ways to ship uh, goods around the world, as well that make them even less emitting, uh, em emitting uh, carbon. So coming then to the final page of my uh, brief introduction, uh, what we will see is um, uh, you know, there will be an impact short term on any company uh, through the crisis we are now heading to. Um, we are very well positioned due to our global footprint. We are very um, uh, positive about the, the midterm outlook for our company. We are also pretty positive that uh, the, uh, the recession will be deep but pretty uh, uh, short. Uh, so we are positive to see a, a recovery earlier than later. Uh, we will benefit from that because we have a tremendous uh, platform around the world with very strong uh, market positions. Uh, there is definitely a need to keep your cost under control. The only predictable thing you have at the moment is your own cost. Revenue is extremely difficult to predict for everybody. So what we will do is we will drive our own efficiency because that will help our customers. And, and finally, uh, I think it's important and we will support that again and again that we have uh, free global trade. That's the best what countries can do, that they avoid to restrict trading uh, because that will not help any country around the world. Even if it helps short term, a long term uh, countries will suffer from that. I think that's important and uh, you know, if we follow that, you know, we will create more value for our customers and if our customers are more successful, they will help the countries we are acting and working in to have a better future. So that is more or less the introduction, and Justin will now explain a little bit more what the impact of rising oil prices have for the different parts of the world, and I think that's very interesting insight into uh, you know, uh, what oil price has overall impact and uh, how you know, companies have to react to it. Thank you.